All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hello, hello. We've got a few minutes to let everybody get in here, and then we'll get started. <clears throat> Not minutes, seconds, really. <laughs> <laughs> we won't make you wait that long. <laughs> All right, but as we're getting started here, open up your chats. You can let us know where you're from. I'm in Texas now, <laughs> still adjusting, but <laughs> the weather is getting nice, nicer. So that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for fall. I'm just outside of Kansas City, and I'm just waiting for the temperatures to drop a little bit. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have St. Paul, Northern California, Virginia. Miss California. Yeah. I'm in Topeka, Kansas, so not too oh, far from you, Laura. I'm in Stillwell, just outside Overland Park. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I forget that you're in Overland Park, uh, Laura. I have an uncle who lives there. Oh, well, if you ever end up out this way, let me know and I'll take you yeah. yarn shopping at the best yarn stores. That's a date. <laughs> Some good ones. I still need to go exploring the ones here. I haven't gotten to do that. <laughs> but all right, I think should we let should we get started here? Yeah, I think everyone's this, in right now. <laughs> all right, hi everyone. I'm Suzanne Nielsen, and this is um, fancy bind offs. So we have a couple different bind offs to show you. Um, please open your chats and you know post any questions there. Laura's also with us here today so she's going to be helping do um, keep an eye on the chat and and add in some thoughts here and there <laughs> and uh, also Laura has some gift certificates to give away mm -hmm. so we have two $20 gift cards tonight so stay tuned and we'll warn you when to open your chat windows about that um, and then stay till the very end because we're going to be talking about what we're doing in October and we're super excited about it yes that'll be fun <laughs> All right, but let's get going on bind offs. Um, so we've already done one of these tutorial Tuesdays on bind offs. So we did cover um, quite a few there. Um, so I tried to focus on different ones here. Um, and let's get started with those. Um, All right. So show my hands here. Um, so some different ones. These, I wanted to show ones that would match the cast offs or sorry, cast ons that we did um, two, three weeks ago. Um, so the first cast on that I did was a slip knot cast on. And that one makes a very stretchy edge um, that does not have that chain that runs across it. Um, so the matching bind off that I'm going to show um, is, um, it's called a sewn bind off. And that one is pretty easy. Um, you actually don't need two needles. <laughs> you um, it just you use a, a darning needle. So you're actually going to like sew the edge off. So you do cut your yarn and make sure you leave yourself at least I would say like over three times the length of um, the the area that you need to bind off. And and you can stretch it out too and make sure that you have at least three times the length of the yarn. Um, and then go ahead and thread your darning needle. And yeah, let me know if I if there's any questions that come up right here. Um, but it, it is a pretty simple one. So what we're going to do is go through two stitches and then back through one stitch. So we'll go through two stitches on your needle here. And then I, I go ahead and pull the yarn here and then back through one stitch. And then we take that stitch off the needle. All right, so as we get going, and you don't want to pull too, too tight, um, but actually when I get going here, I usually go through two and, and pull through two and then off through one. And I've got a little tail here that I caught up the tail <laughs> for the bottom, but, and then back through that one stitch. And that is it. So pretty darn simple. Um, the, the tricks are to keep your tension um, from getting too, too tight. So through two and then back through one and take that stitch off. And you can um, through two, sometimes I do this through 
I go through this one and take it off. And before I pull my needle through, I go back through two more stitches. So that just like cuts down on the amount of times you need to pull your yarn. And I find that that actually also helps me keep my tension more even. So the, the repeat then becomes going through this one and taking it off the needle, but leaving it kind of on the darning needle as I go through these other two stitches and then pull the yarn. And then I do kind of give it a little stretch um, to make it um, to stay even and make sure it's I'm not pulling too tight. So off one and then through two. All right, so that is the sewn bind off. Um, and you know, when you get to the end, you, you end up with just going through the last stitch. Um, so let's see if I can get fast through that. So let me know if there's any questions or thoughts on this bind off. Has anyone ever used this? Does anyone have a, a, a something that they've used it for? Um, I do call for this bind off in one of my uh, cowl patterns um, because it matches the matches the cast on. So I'm getting to the last two here. So you just go through like you were normally and then and then go through the last one. Enough and then just pull your yarn all the way. And you've got a very stretchy bind off that does not have a chain. Um, and it looks just like the slip knot uh, cast on. So here's the slip knot cast on, very stretchy. And here's the, um, the sewn, another sewn bind off. Well, and is this, is this also what they call the Elizabeth Zimmerman sewn bind off? Um, or is that no, one actually? Different? I don't know. I okay. think it is. <laughs> But I, yeah, I think it's, um, I haven't heard it called that. I just heard sewn bind off, but maybe it is. Okay. <laughs> She's done a lot of agreement. Well, I, I know she used one. Um, she yeah. used a sewn bind off. So. It, some, yeah, I don't know. And it looks like most people haven't, haven't seen it, but say it looks handy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is handy. It's really handy in a lot of situations. I think, you know, it doesn't use quite as much yarn maybe as some other bind offs. So sometimes when you get, you know, when you have like a, you're when you're playing, playing yarn chicken, chicken. <laughs> yeah, you might want to use it. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, all right, I'm going to jump right into the next one and then we'll take a break and we'll do the giveaways. But the next one I'm going to do is since we called this fancy cast offs, <laughs> fancy bind offs, um, I wanted to do one that's maybe a little fancier is the um, Pico bind off. Um, so the basics with the Pico bind off are that you're actually going to cast on a few stitches and then cast off more and then a cast on cast off so you actually start the cast off um, by casting on um, two stitches uh, and there's there's different ways depending on how big you want your picots to be um, but i just am doing a, a knitted cast on i didn't twist my stitch here um, so i'll do another one and you know what i think i will throw just to make it a little um, easier. So you go into the stitch um, and wrap it around, pull it through. And then often with a, when you're normally casting on, you would um, come to the back and put it on the needle. Um, you can play around and see which way you like it, but often it's okay to just put it on, <clears throat> put it back on the needle. Um, and then you go into like, oh, I keep switching back. You go into a regular bind off. So then <clears throat> I cast it on two stitches and now I'm going to knit two stitches. And pass one over. So that's like binding off one. Sorry, I'm this okay. Binding off one. And then we're gonna bind off another one. That's binding off two. And then we'll continue down and we'll bind off three and bind off four. Okay, so bind off four and then place that stitch back on the needle. So now I have this like little, our little Pico bump. 
And so to get another bump, um, I placed I placed the one that was on my um, right needle back on the needle. And then um, I'm going to, again, cast on two stitches. So cast on one, cast on two. Oops, I split the yarn there, sorry. Well, and picot bind offs are all going to be a little bit different. Usually they will have you cast on a few stitches and you'll normally be binding off more than you're casting on, but it's not a set number of stitches. So sometimes you'll be right. casting on three and binding off five or yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. but, but there's not like a specific number to remember. Your pattern will tell you. Your pattern will tell you, yeah. Or you can make it up like on your own and, and decide what you want to do. But I just cast it on two. So now I'm going to go into binding off. So that was knit two, pass the stitch over, and then knit another one, pass the stitch over. That was two, so now I'm going to do three, another one, three, and four. So this one is cast on two stitches and then bind off four stitches. And then you place, once you've bound off four stitches, you place this stitch back onto the left needle to start um, casting on again. And so that gives you these little um, Pico stitches. All right, any questions on that one? Let's see, I'm gonna switch back to, um, um, me. Yes, and... so you get those decorative bumps. Um, I've seen them on the cuffs of socks. Uh, I've seen them on the edges of shawls. Occasionally mm -hmm. designers will use a Pico bind off on like a sweater cuff. Um, I often find them on thing uh, patterns, knitting patterns for um, babies because they're kind of sweet. It just creates like a sweet little lacy edge. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, when you block whatever you're doing, you can block those points out. Yeah. And there's, well, there's, there's several different ways to do Pico bind off. So this is one of them, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, maybe next time we can cover two. There's a way if you're in stockinette, you can knit two together and yarn over. So you have a whole like lace row and then you fold it over and that gives you a Pico bind off also. Um, and yeah. then you have kind of a folded edge. So you'd have a thicker edge, which is great sometimes on hats or, you know, some other places. Um, but this one is one that would be better, you know, on shawls or like the edge of a cuff where you don't want like some extra thickness. Um, I should have, I should have brought, I have, I have a really large shawl. It's a lace shawl and mm -hmm. the Pico bind off took me like two days to sit down yes. and do because it's a huge edge, but it is really lovely. It's in um, <laughs> Malabrigo lace. So it's all soft and it's oh. perfect. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, it's hard to make yourself do some of these nicer cast offs, but you know, if you have the right cast off, it really can like complete your whole piece. So just take the time, I would say, and, and do the cast off that you like that goes with your project. And, um, you know, don't skip out and just do the fastest, easiest cast on, cast off or cast on. Yeah. Really. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Taking the time to do the extra, for instance, taking the time to do the tubular cast on is really, yeah. <laughs> it really creates a beautiful edge and a finish. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, we, yeah, go for oh, it. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say, we did show the tubular bind off um, in the previous mm -hmm. um, tutorial Tuesday for the bind offs. So if you want to take a look at that one, um, I might have the sample. Yes, and I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the chat for um, Zen Yarn Garden's uh, YouTube channel. Um, I can't speak and type at the same time. <laughs> Um, you can find all of our past tutorial Tuesdays on the YouTube channel. Um, and that includes, we did a first round of cast ons and bind offs, but we had um, people request extra um, more than we had prepared ahead of time. And so we decided to do the second round this round. Um, so you can find the previous rounds and the cast ons that we did at the beginning of the month, um, which, which are the accompaniments to these bind offs, or at least some of them are.
Yes, and with so, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, open your chat now, Suzanne. Say whatever you were going to say. <laughs> no, go for it. Well, I was going to say, open giveaway. your chat because we're going to do the gift card giveaways now. For the first one, I'm going to take the third winner. Um, and we pick different, or I'm sorry, the third correct answer in the chat. Um, and we pick different ones just so that people with super fast connections don't always win. Um, so the first question is, um, the Slipknot cast on matches which bind off? And that is um, just a hint. It's the first one that Suzanne showed. Okay, the third oh God, person guys. is Aaliyah Somerville, it looks like. I think. Let me double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's Aaliyah. Yeah, good job. Okay. Um, Aaliyah, you can go ahead and select Zen Yarn Garden in the um, chat window and go ahead and message her your email address and she will take care of getting you your gift card. So the second, the second question, this time I'm going to take the fourth person. Um, and if you are, Aaliyah, you are not eligible again. So we appreciate your participation, but only one per night. Um, so everyone else, the second question is, what was the second bind off that, <laughs> I didn't even get the question out. <laughs> They're fast. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I'm having trouble because my windows are, can you, oh, there Wait, we go. Did you say second? Oh. Uh, well, I said the second technique we um, no, demonstrated, which, and it looks like that one's going to be Denise O'Brien. Right. And so, Denise, please go ahead and uh, email or message um, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. Good job. Do you want to wait and talk about the next one at the end, or do you want me to talk about that now? About what? Then um, I'm sorry. The next, the next session, October sessions. Oh, we'll wait till the end. Yeah, let's wait. Let's let's save that okay. one till the end. Well, then we'll end that. And all right. You. So I'll now myself. Um, <laughs> all right, we're gonna get back to the other techniques. Let me share my screen. And <clears throat> all right, so last time we did um, we did a cast on called. Um, but I think commonly it's called the Chinese waitress cast on, um, but also, or a double chain. So it creates this kind of double chain that you see um, on this edge. It's very stretchy, it's really nice. Um, and it just happens to have a nice, really nice matching cast off, which is great, great to use in a couple other situations too. Um, it does have that double chain um, here, which almost looks like, even like a tiny, tiny I cord. Um, so in the in the last session, I did an I cord bind off, and I just went ahead and did an I cord bind or I cord cast on, and I did an I card bind off on that one too. Um, and this is a three stitch I cord bind off, so you can see it's a little bit thicker. Um, but this would roughly be maybe like a two chain, two um, stitch I cord bind off, but it's it's just a nice little chain. Um, so I'm going to show you that. So that one is. Um, it has different names too. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, um, and depending on which how you want your chain to fall. But it is called like Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll I will show that without further ado. You know what I'm going to do is um, show this one. So take a look at this. But I'm actually going to take this out and use this little swatch so I don't have to use my other um, swatch. Um, <clears throat> so in this one, the, the key difference is that you have an extra setup um, a, or step in between binding off. So you're gonna add in a yarn over between and there's two different ways to do it. Um, one is where you're purling and one is knitting and it, it makes the chains fall on different sides a little bit. Um, so you should experiment if you're, um, if you, you know, if you're trying to figure out which one is the absolute best for you, um, then just do a little experimentation to see which side you want yours to be on. Also something to think about is, um, I think I mentioned this in the last, last cast off too, is decide if you want to bind off when you're on the right side, or sometimes you want to bind off when you're on the wrong side, 
because um, of the way it falls. So that usually, you know, your pattern will tell you. Um, they're not always right, I would say. So if you think <laughs> that you've experimented and you have a better, you know, option, then that's the beauty of knitting. So don't feel bad about not following the, the bind off that the designer chose. Um, because sometimes there's a lot of other factors that go into what the designer has chosen. Um, but all right, for the stretchy bind off, um, you start with just a knit stitch. Um, but then before you do the next knit stitch, we're going to give it um, a, we're going to put a yarn over in here. And with uh, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, I'm doing the knit version first. Um, so we would yarn over, but we're actually going to call it um, something different because we're going to yarn over in the opposite direction. So we're going to come over from the back instead of a normal yarn over would wrap like this, but we are going to wrap it um, from the back like this and then go back around and knit the next stitch. And then we take both that like oppositely wrapped yarn over and the stitch and, and put them over. And you can do it one at a time. It looks a little neater, I think, if you do it one at a time, but often I, I don't, I just do them both at the same time. So I'll show you both ways. All right, so then the repeat becomes, so we do this backwards yarn over and I will show you throwing also and then knit and then take that yarn over, over the needle and the stitch over the needle. And one more time, backwards yarn over, knit. And then here, I'm gonna take both of them at the same time. So take, take them both and just put them over. It's, it's the same essentially, I just find it, it pulls your yarn a little different. Um, so you can decide which one works for you. All right, now I'm going to throw so you can see what that looks like. Um, so, you know, normally you would wrap your yarn this way, but we are going to just bring your yarn from the back over the top of the needle. So an opposite direction of yarn over and then knit like normal. And then pull both of those loops over the stitch on the needle. All right, so that is giving us, let's see if we can just take a look at it quickly here, that nice um, double chain. So you can see like the chain going across the top, but then there's also this kind of chain on the side. Um, so once we get more stitches, it will look, look better too. Um, but the kind of tricky thing for this one is there's also a pearl version. Um, so I wanted to show you that pearl version as well. Um, so with the pearl version, um, we still are going to do that a yarn over in between, but with the pearl version, it gets a little tricky because you just do a regular yarn over. So a regular yarn over. And then when you're purling, you wrap the yarn the opposite way. So now when, as I purl that stitch, I'm gonna wrap the opposite way of normal. And it's just all about how you're getting those, um, those chains to fall. So we do a yarn over in the normal way, and then we purl and wrap in the opposite way and pull those over. Yarn over. And this is another one of those that you can experiment a lot with and find out which one you know, looks the best for your particular case. Um, but, and I will. Yeah, these, um, this would be a great bind off for toe up socks. Up yes, at the top of the cuff. Yes, it's very That's stretchy. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. All right, so throwing version, I will um, do my yarn over the normal way and then purl the opposite way and then pull your, then I kind of have to get the tail out of the way there and pull both of those. Sorry, keep the camera over. All right, so yarn over and purl opposite. I admire your ability to knit all different directions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, it, it, so if you, if you don't do that, you know, purling the opposite or, 
when you're in the knit version wrapping it the opposite, then each of your chains looks twisted. And so that's why you you kind of you do need to you know wrap one of them in the, the opposite direction to get the, the chains to kind of look right. But you can see here, um, so this first part I was doing the knit version here <laughs> and my my chain kind of is flowing on the top and then the the other chain is on this side of my work but when i'm doing the pearl version the the chain shows up more on the front of the work um so that's you know your choice you can either um you know then then you just you have so many options you can you can bind off when you're on the right side of the work or the wrong side of the work and still get the chain to like appear where you want it to. So that's a really good one. Um, and like I said, I showed the, the I cord bind off in the previous tutorial, but that's also a beautiful, nice, clean, finished um, way to bind off. And this is the, the I cord bind off flowing into I cord edging, which maybe we'll do edging sometime in the future <laughs> edges. Um, and then it can flow straight into an I cord bind off. So you have this nice little contained square here. Um, for joining us for the blanket tutorial kicking off next month, yeah. we will be doing I cord edges. Yeah. Yes. So that will be a fun one. Um, let's get back to you. any questions. Um, any questions? Any questions? Uh, oh, did I, did I get the, the yes. things looking okay? Okay. Yes. I, I watched when you were, when you were unpicking, your hands weren't quite in frame, but once you. Once I got back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of great, you know, for toe up socks, I would do, um, possibly also the, uh, tubular bind off is a really good one. Especially mm -hmm. if you're in ribbing, um, that would be a tubular is a great one for socks, I think. Um, I love that at cuff edges too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's just so many options. It's so exciting, right? Isn't that the fun of knitting? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Hi. all right, Laura, do you want to tell us about next month? Sure. So um, in, in certain circles, October is known as Socktober. Um, where everyone knits socks. And so we decided that would be kind of a fun tutorial Tuesday. So next month, um, all the tutorial Tuesdays are going to be focused around socks. And we've selected a free pattern on Ravelry and on their website. It's called Rye by Tin Can Knits. And it's a pattern for worsted weight socks. And the reason we selected worsted weight was because we thought it's easier to learn a new technique on bigger yarn and bigger needles um, and, and not start there. out with fingering weight yarn and tiny needles. Um, so we've got four sessions planned to sort of lead you through making your first sock. We'll talk about all the different ways you can knit socks with double pointed needles or magic loop or two at a time, those kinds of things. We'll talk about cast ons and your cuffs and legs. We will go through um, doing the heel flap and the heel turn, which is sometimes the scariest part of the sock. And you just have to trust in the pattern because it's kind of like a magic. Um, and then we'll cover the gusset and picking up all the stitches going down the side of the stock, and then we'll go all the way down to the toe, um, cover toe decreases and how to Kitchener. So, mm -hmm. and I say we, but really, I mean, um, Shana Billow and Suzanne will be demonstrating for you. Oh, you <laughs> and I'll be adding color commentary from the sidelines. Um, the reason that I don't usually demonstrate is because I knit left-handed and backwards, which is confusing for everyone. So um, <laughs> that's why you usually don't see me knitting. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to um, put a link to, um, well, actually I will, let me share my screen and then we'll I'll also put a link to it. Um, Roxanne is developing a project kit for us for next month. Yeah, and she so is dying, she is dying yarn based on the newest Zen Yarn Garden family member. This is Zena. She is a cute little French bulldog. She's absolutely adorable. And um, Roxanne says she's very, very tired. She <laughs> is dying a worsted weight colorway based on Zena's coloring. So it'll be black, white, and a little bit brown. Um, and she has set up a listing along with um, the um, registration for the tutorials. All the tutorials are free. The pattern is free. If you want to knit along with um, yarn from your stash, you are more than welcome to do that. But if you want to join the project kit, that is there as well. I'm going to put that in our chat thread. Um, mm -hmm. And 
So you can go ahead and sign up for that this week and that will be shipping out immediately. You won't necessarily need it for next week. Um, we can just talk about cast ons and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then by the following week, um, we can move through those. Oh, what am I missing? And I believe that the kit is two skeins of yarn, which most people might not need the full two skeins to do a pair of socks. Yes, that's um, for the size large. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, up to two skeins. Um, if you decide you want to buy another single skein or you have something in your stash, you can easily make that work. Yeah. yeah. So, and then the pattern, or, the pattern is downloadable for free. Mm -hmm. um, and Roxanne just added the, the pattern is Rye by Tin Can Knits. And it's a free pattern on their website or on Ravelry. And that will give you your approximate needle size. Um, and we will look forward to knitting socks with you. I'm very excited because these are going to be warm, cozy house socks. They're going to be perfect for November and December and January. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then you'll get to choose um, if you're brand new, entirely brand new to socks, you can work one at a time. Um, if you're not brand new to socks, you could work two, either two at a time, or you could just work them in tandem, which is you could work on the cuffs and the legs, and then we'll go through the heel turns and you can do both heel turns and that kind of thing. So that at the end of the month, you will have a finished pair of socks if you'd like. Otherwise we'll lead you through the first one and then you can do your second one and and reference our tutorials. Yes. So, All right, that's gonna be fun. Coming yeah. up soon, I can't believe it's like next week. I know, <laughs> I know, it's crazy. So we will see you next Tuesday, which is October 5th, and we'll start on socks. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, guys. And come on back. Have a good night. Bye, thank you.